In this lesson, we're going to be graphing cube root functions, comparing cube root function using average rates of change, and solving real life problems involving cube root functions. Cube root functions. A cube root function is a radical function with an index of 3. The parent function for the family of cube root function is f of x equals the cube root of x. The domain and range of f are all real numbers. The graph of f of x equals the cube root of x increases on the entire domain. You can transform graphs of cube root functions in the same way you transform graphs of square root functions. And notice, we have all of our x values that are possible here because you can take the cube root of a negative number, whereas a square root or any even index root, you cannot take the, uh, that root of a negative number. So that's why we have uh, both negative x values and positive x values. For example one, we're going to graph h of x equals the cube root of x minus 4, and then compare it to the graph of f of x equals the cube root of x. Well, whenever I'm graphing and feeling unable, I like to say, we can make a table. So I'm going to make a table of values. And if I was doing a square root function, I would just start at 0. But I'm going to have 0 in the middle, because I can have both positive and negative numbers. And just like the square root functions, we want to put numbers that are going to give us round, clean numbers that pop out of our cube root operation. So I want to put in perfect cubes. Well, just as a quick reminder, the first few perfect cubes, well, 0 cubed is 0, 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, and so on. Uh, 27 obviously does not fit on our graph. Now the opposites are true, so negative 2 cubed is negative 8, negative 1 cubed is negative one and so on. Um, so I'm gonna use these values to put in. I want whatever is under my radical sign here to pop out a clean number that makes it easy for me to graph. So I'll make my table. So I'll put zero in the middle. And the cube root of zero is zero minus four, that's negative four. The cube root of one is one. And then minus four is negative three. And then the cube root of eight, that's my next perfect cube. So my next x value I'll put is eight. The cube root of eight is two. And then minus th four right here, that's gonna be negative two. Now I'm gonna do the negatives of one and eight. So the cube root of negative one is negative one, and then minus four, that's negative five. And then the cube root of negative eight is negative two, minus four, that's negative six. And that's all that's going to fit on my graph. And notice, when I do it this way, I get the pattern here. Okay, So every time I'm increasing to the next perfect cube, I'm adding 1. And if I'm decreasing to the previous perfect cube, then I'm subtracting 1 as I go to the left. So now I'm just going to plot these points. So negative 8 comma negative 6. And then I have negative 1, negative 5. So that negative 1 would be right here, negative 5. And then I have 0, negative 4. And then I have 1, negative 3. It's going to be right there. And then I have 8, negative 2. So I'm going to sketch my graph now. All right, so now I've sketched a graph of this, and now I'm going to compare it to the graph of f of x equals the cube root of x, which is the parent function. Well, if you notice, the only difference here that I can look at in the equation is this minus 4. And remember, anything on the outside of my parent function, which in this case is the cube root of x, um, that's going to be a vertical change. So this minus 4 is going to be a translation four units down from the parent function. The parent function would just be this, this exact same curve, just translated four units up. So what I'm going to write is h of x is a translation four units down from f of x. So I've successfully graphed my function and then described the transformation, and now we're done. For example, two, I'm going to graph g of x equals the negative cube root of x plus 2, and then compare that to the graph of the parent function f of x equals the cube root of x. Once again, since I'm graphing, I'm going to want to make a table of values.
and my X values that I'm going to pick for my table, I want to make the inside of the cube root to be a perfect cube. So remember, my perfect cubes that I have that are going to fit on here are looking like negative 8, and then negative 1, 0, 1, and then 8. That's that'll all that fits. But since I have this plus 2 in here, I need to adjust my X values. So let's, let's say I want to start in the middle at 0. I wouldn't really start at 0. I'd start at negative 2, and so on. So, so instead of 0, I'll start at negative 2, because that will give me 0. And when I plug this in, I get negative 2 plus 2 is 0. The negative cube root of 0 is 0. Okay, And then the next value I want to do is 1 for my next perfect cube. Well, if I plug in negative 1 here, that will give me 1. So negative 1 here. So I get the cube root of 1, which is 1, and then make that negative. So that's negative 1. Okay, And then the next perfect cube that I want this to be is 8. So I'm going to make my x value 6 because 6 plus 2 is 8. So if I have 6 here, I get 6 plus 2 is 8. The cube root of 8 is 2. Make that negative. That's negative 2. Now notice you can kind of already see the pattern here. I have 0, then negative 1, then negative 2. And then when I put the other perfect cubes, you, you'll see the pattern in the same way. Um, but the next perfect cube that I want to have is negative 1 on the inside. Well, x would have to be negative 3 because negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. So if I do negative 1 here, the cube root of negative 1, this whole thing would, would be negative 1, and then make that negative. That's positive 1. And then for my next x value, I want it to be negative 8. So in order for that to be negative 8, I need x to be negative 10. Negative 10 plus 2 is negative 8. Cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. Make that negative or take the opposite of that, and then you get positive 2. And it follows our pattern. As I go to the next perfect square, and I notice that I put negative 1 here instead of negative 3. That should be a negative 3, so I'll change that. But anyway, as I go to the next perfect cube, I should say, um, the g value decreases by 1. And that's because of this negative sign right here. The coefficient of the entire radical expression is negative 1. So that's why every time I increase to the next perfect cube, I will decrease my g value by 1. So anyway, I'm going to plot these points. So negative 10, comma 2. And then I have negative 3, comma 1. And then I have negative 2, 0. Then I have negative 1, negative 1. And then I have 6, negative 2. So I'm going to sketch my curve. So now I have to compare this graph to the graph of f of x equals the cube root of x, which is the parent function. Well, I notice that I have a negative on the outside. So remember, negative is going to be a vertical change. So what that's actually going to be is a reflection in the x-axis, because whenever I'm reflecting, I want to figure out what my mirror is. And it's going to be the x-axis, because it's a vertical change. I'm going from either up to down or down to up. So I have a reflection. in the x axis. And then I have this plus 2 on the inside of my function. And I'm saying the inside of my function because this plus 2 is under the radical symbol. If it was on the outside, it would be the cube root of x, and then the plus 2 would be after. Um, but anything on the inside is a horizontal change. And remember, uh, this plus 2 doesn't mean I'm going to be translating this to the right 2, because everything on the inside is uh, reversed. It's backwards. So the plus 2 means I'm going to be translating it two units to the left. So this is a translation, two units left. So I've successfully graphed this function and then identified my transformations, and now we're done. In example three, we're going to let g of x equal two times the cube root of x minus three, all plus four. Part A, describe the transformations from the graph of f of x equals the cube root of x to the graph of g, and then part B, graph g. Well, first I'm going to describe the transformations, and we can tell right away just by looking at the function. 
Notice I have this two on the outside. Anytime I'm multiplying the outside, that's going to be a vertical stretch or shrink. And since the two is greater than one, it's going to be a vertical stretch. So first I'm going to write vertical stretch. And the scale factor is going to be two with a scale factor of two. And then notice I have the minus three on the inside. Well, that's gonna be a translation three units right. And then the plus four on the outside, that's gonna be a translation four units up. So translation three units right. Remember it's three units right because everything on the inside is reversed. So this minus three means I go three right. And then I'm gonna put and four units up. So we're done with part A, so I'm gonna do part B, which is just graphing this function. And once again, I'm gonna make a table of values. And once again, I want whatever's inside of my cube root to be a perfect cube. So the middle value that I'll put on my table, I want this to be zero. So to make this zero, I need x to be three because three minus three is zero. So this will be three. And then the cube root of zero is zero times two is zero plus four. So I get three comma four as my first point. And then to the right, my next perfect cube is one. So x would be four here. So four minus three is one. Cube root of one is one. One times two is two. 2 plus 4 is 6. And then the next perfect cube after 1 is going to be 8, because 2 cubed is 8. So I need my x value to be 11. So 11 minus 3. Well, let me write that down first. 11 minus 3 is 8. Cube root of 8 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. And notice the pattern here. Okay, I have my values increasing by 2 here, and that's because this 2 on the outside is being multiplied uh, by my square root symbol, cube root symbol, I should say. Um, and I know that my next values, if I put the next perfect cubes going to the left here, this would be two and zero, and we can uh, confirm that. So anyway, to make my next value, so three would make it zero, so my next perfect cube to the left is negative one, I would need x to be two. And just to double check, I have two minus three is negative one, cube root of that's negative one, times two is negative two, plus four, that does get me two. And then, the next value would be negative 8, so x would have to be negative 5. And if I did negative 5 minus 3, that's negative 8. Cube root of that is negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. And then negative 4 plus 4 is 0. And notice how I use the pattern to fill out my table quicker. You can do that, but it's always good to double check. Anyway, now I'm going to plot my points. So I have negative 5 comma 0. And I have 2 comma 2. And I have three comma four. Then I have four comma six. Then I have 11 comma eight. So now I'm gonna sketch my curve. my arrows here. You can kind of see an arrow here. It's a little messy. I apologize for that. Anyway, I've successfully described the transformations from the parent function, and then I actually made my table and graphed this function, and now we're done with this one. So in example four, we're going to be comparing average rates of change. The graph of cube root function m is shown. Compare the average rate of change of m to the average rate of change of h of x, which is the cube root of one-fourth x over the interval of x equals zero and x equals eight. Well, first I'll do the graph, because that's what it tells me to do first. And I want to go from 0 to 8. Well, my point on the graph, 0, when x is 0, I should say, my y value, my output value, is also 0. So that's right here. And then I want to go to 8. So when x equals 8, my output value is also 8. And remember, on a graph, average rate of change is really just the slope between the line that crosses through these two points. So you could 
draw a little line segment and do your rise over run. I go up eight, right eight. Well, that's eight over eight. Another way to think of it is it's this output minus this output over this input minus this input, which is the exact same thing as slope. It's going to be eight minus zero. So this output is eight minus zero over this input is eight. And then this input is zero. So this average rate of change from this interval for graph M is going to be one. And now what I want to do for the function that I'm given without the graph is do the same thing. So the output, what I want to do is H of H, that's my output, minus H of zero over the input eight minus zero. Well, if you notice right away, H of zero is just going to be zero, because if I multiply by zero here, I get one fourth of zero, that's zero, the cubit of zero is zero. And then this zero goes away as well. So really I'm just gonna get H of eight over eight. Well, H of eight is gonna be the cube root of one fourth of eight. Well, one fourth of eight is two, so it's a cube root of two. And then remember this is zero, so I don't need to write it. And over, this is eight. Now I'm gonna plug this into my calculator to give me an approximation. So I get the cube root, and notice I typed in CBRT the, to quickly get me the cube root of two, and then all over eight. And that gives me about 1.57, I'll round that to 1.6. So this is about 0 0.16, I think I said 1.6, sorry, 0 0.16. So I know the average rate of change on the graph is much higher than the function right here, h, because when we calculate it, obviously 1 is much larger than 0 0.16. So anyway, we calculated the average rates of change, and we compared both of them, and now we're done. For example 5, the shoulder height h in centimeters of a male Asian elephant can be modeled by the function h equals 62.5 times the cube root of t, all plus 75.8, where t is the age in years of the elephant. Use a graphing calculator to graph the function. Estimate the age of an elephant whose shoulder height is 200 centimeters. So on my graphing calculator, I'm just going to graph this function, which is h equals 62.5 times the cube root of t plus 75.8. And then this will show me what the function looks like. And then I want to see where the 200 centimeters is. So I'm also going to just graph y equals 200. And then where they intersect, that's going to be where the age of that elephant is going to be with this 200 centimeter shoulder height. So I'm going to go to desmos.com right now. So I'm going to type in h of x equals 62.5 times the cube root of x. I'm going to use x because that's my input variable on Desmos instead of t. And then plus 75.8. So if I notice, it kind of looks like this here, but I'm way too zoomed in. So now this looks like the cube root functions that we've been graphing here. So maybe I'll stretch this up a bit. Stretch this out. Uh, and then what I want to do, now that I've graphed this with the graphing calculator, is see where this intersects with 200, where my shoulder height, my output, y equals 200. So now let's see where that intersects. So it looks like I need to zoom in a little bit more. Drag this down. All right. So that looks like about 200 right there, and exactly, because Desmos will tell you the intersection automatically, which is awesome. And this says 7.847. Well, that's my input variable, that's t. Well, it says to estimate the age of the elephant, and it says 7.847 is my intersection point. Uh, and I'm just gonna round this to the nearest full year. So what I'm gonna say is this elephant is about eight years old. So I'm gonna go over here and write that down. The elephant is about eight years old. So I've successfully graphed this function with my graphing calculator and then figure out the age where the elephant's shoulder is about 200 centimeters. And now we're done with this one.